What's going on guys? It's Queasy Dog here and today I wanted to do a very quick video of everything that I've recently purchased on just this past Black Friday to try to rebuild the computer that unfortunately was lost in the flood. If you guys didn't watch my last video, take a look. That was a little bit of an update. We're still building things, we're still getting everything together, but these deals were honestly just too good to pass up. I sold some stuff to be able to buy this so I don't feel like anything was in a pocket, but without further ado, we're gonna go in no real order here. We're gonna break down what the part is, why I picked it maybe over something else, what I paid, and let's just get started. Let's go with the processor. So this guy here is the Ryzen 7 2700X, and I know a lot of you guys are maybe wondering or questioning why I didn't go with the Ryzen 5 3600X in the third generation Ryzen series. And to me, it boiled down to two quick things. Number one was overall price. I ended up snagging this guy. Keep in mind, these are all uh, in Canadian dollars. I ended up snagging this guy for $189. All of this stuff, by the way, was purchased on Amazon Canada. I will have links both for amazon.ca and amazon.com for you guys if you wanna check out current pricing and availability. But Having the Ryzen 7 be an 8-core, 16-thread processor, it will multitask a little bit better than the Ryzen 5 3600X that ended up going on sale for, I think it was right around 135, uh, sorry, 235 or $238. Uh, now, the third generation Ryzen does outperform this guy in single core processors or single core tasks, things like gaming, but I don't do a lot of gaming. This is pretty much once the studio is rebuilt, going to be pretty much for YouTube by itself. So the multi-cores on this guy really set the bar for me and really solidified that overall purchase. So Ryzen 7 2700X is the processor and we're just gonna end up using the, um, the stock Wraith cooler there as well. Really no need to push this past its stock limits, at least for now. Uh, next thing up will be these guys right here. Now, if I can make sure that those aren't blowing out with the light. So these, of course, are RAM kits. This is an XPG D10, I do believe. It's silver in color. Wasn't necessarily my first choice, but the price was way too good to pass up. These are 3000 megahertz kits. Timing on these are CL16-2020. Uh, now, a lot of people online say these can be tightened and these can be easily overclocked to 3200 megahertz. 3000 megahertz out of the box, of course, but these, believe it or not, for a single box of two by eight, so 16 gigabytes of DDR4, was 65 Canadian dollars tax-free. To put that in perspective, for any of you guys watching this in the States, this is sub $50. Actually, probably closer to like 40 to $45 for 16 gigs of DDR4. Thankfully, Pricing is finally starting to level off on these. So I figured, why not just go ahead, fill my DIMM slots, I'll get 32 gigs, and it worked out to being about the price of 16 gigs on any other day. So this, I am very happy about. I'll be able to run my Photoshop, my Premiere, my After Effects, my Audition, and probably a couple of memory hungry uh, uh, Chrome tabs all at once. And that I'm super pumped about. The next part is storage. So this is as well, the XPG, not sponsored by the way, they just happen to have a really good sale. Uh, so this is the XPG NVMe. Um, I think the particular model of this one is the S11 Pro. This does have a little heat shield on it, which is kind of cool, but this has a read write of 3,500 over 3,000. So blazing fast and similar to the Ram, this guy was on for a really good sale. I think I picked this up for uh, $159 with a $15 rebate, so right around $145, uh, and that as well was tax-free. So really, really couldn't pass this up for the feature set that it allows me. This is going to be my main drive that I use for all of my programs and I think for scratch and render as well. And in the PC that I partially lost in the flood, I have 
two two terabyte mechanical drives that I'm gonna take out of there. Um, I may take my 120 SSD out as well. That was a Samsung Evo 860, I believe. It's an older one. I might use that 120 for a scratch, but this is gonna be my primary speed drive. And this is my first forte into NVMe, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, other than that, we're gonna take a look at this guy right here. Again, gonna to try to get the glare off this. So this is a Corsair CX650M. Uh, this is a semi-modular power supply, semi-modular power supply. And I picked this guy for two reasons. Uh, well, actually maybe three. One, the price was really good. Again, Black Friday special on this guy. I think I paid $79 for it. There were some comparable uh, alternate brands that were similarly priced. So we had uh, the EVGA W series that was right around 71 and 65 would have net me a 700 watt gigabit. Uh, but at the end of the day, this guy here, very reliable. Everybody knows the name on this guy. And the big thing about Corsair power supplies is this one being 650 watts, this is actually rated for continuous power at 650, not just peak power. And you really have to watch some of the off brands where you know they're, they're gonna tell you it's 650 or seven or eight or whatever the case is, but that may be advertised peak power and not consistent power. This guy here, is 100% consistent power. So that's why I went with this. And I guess the last reason why, uh, you guys probably can't see it from there, but the cabling system on this guy, uh, no ketchup and mustard. So this is gonna give me a nice clean overall look and aesthetic and my cat just came up here. That's kind of cool. Uh, you can see his tail pushing around. Uh, but that's why I picked this one. Super, super excited. That's gonna replace the old thermal take uh, smart power I think that I had in my last PC. Now. All of this is going to go in or on the Gigabyte Oros uh, B450 board. And this is something that I struggled with um, off and on for about a week to try to determine which board I was going to go with. I had considered going with an X570 just to sort of like future-proof myself. Then I thought about an X470 and ultimately I'm not gonna overclock. All these parts, again, are used as a render machine and sort of productivity, so I really didn't need to shoot for the moon. And ultimately, my decision came down to this or the uh, B450 Strix by Asus. And um, I ended up settling on this one. They were actually the same price, uh, but I settled on this one because it actually had more five volt headers for RGB. Uh, the Strix board had two 12 volt. This one has, I think, a single 12 volt. Uh, RGBW and then two five volt uh, RGB. So I can end up customizing it a little bit more, kind of more vanity sake than anything else. Uh, but this also fits the overall aesthetic where I actually bought the RAM first. Uh, the heat shields on this guy actually have, and you guys again, probably can't see it from there, um, but this actually has some accents on it that are silver. So I think that will tie everything together pretty well. And of course, you can't have five volt RGB headers without some of these guys here. So these are deep cool RGB 200 pros. Uh, this is two strips uh, with extenders and these are addressable RGBs. So I have the opportunity to put these in the case by either magnets or the 3M adhesive to just give the case a little bit of flair. Um, I ended up, we're gonna go over it in a second, but I grabbed a uh, RGB lit uh, three fan case by Corsair with a tempered glass side panel. So this is just gonna help uh, spruce that up on the inside a little bit. And of course the uh, Wraith cooler is the RGB version as well, being that it came uh, included with the 2700X. So I think I ended up getting these guys for uh, like $12.99 Canadian, which was dirt cheap. Uh, motherboard, by the way, uh, when I got that on sale for Black Friday, I think that was right around 135, um, 189 I mentioned for the processor, 79 for the power supply, and then we went over the RAM and the memory as well. So we're gonna push these over, and then the case that we ended up going with is this guy right here. Now this is the uh, Corsair Carbide series. This is the Spec Delta. And there's a couple different reasons why I went with this. Had I have been able to get any case, I've always really enjoyed, like, I think it's the uh, 580X, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the cube style cases from Corsair. But I ended up giving myself a budget of about $100 for a case. 
and this just broke that at about 102. Uh, it was on sale for some discounted price through other Canadian retailers. I think the cheapest I saw it was right around 89, but at the end of the day, getting this on Amazon and lumping it in with the free shipping on everything else ended up making this a better bargain because at 89, I was subject to anywhere between 10 and $29 shipping to go with uh, another reseller. So with this guy here, within that budget of $100, you actually get uh, three RGB fans in the front, full side uh, pane of tempered glass, and then you also get an additional 120 mil black fan for the exhaust. And at $100, I couldn't really find any other cases that included this amount of uh, not only RGB, but this amount of fans. So most cases within this pricing category, or give or take a couple dollars, uh, only had maybe one intake and one exhaust. So for this to have three intakes and then one exhaust, really, really good value. Um, I was looking as well at the Deep Cool Maddox, I think it's called, the uh, 50 uh, 4F, which is an older model, not the Maddox 55, but the Maddox 54F actually gave you four addressable RGB fans. It was on sale for right around $70, but it was an in-store only, and the only store was about three hours away. And I actually work uh, retail myself, so I work from 7 in the morning until like 11 p.m. at night uh, on Black Friday. So there's no way I could go myself. So I ended up just picking this guy up. And uh, I may actually do a, a full unboxing and a tour because I don't see a lot of videos on this case online. And it's, it's honestly a, a spectacular case from what I've had the opportunity to see so far. Now, you guys may be wondering as well what we're doing for a GPU because I, I didn't buy any GPUs. And the GPU is actually going to be recycled out of my old PC. Um, again, I don't game a lot, so an update really wasn't necessary. I do have the MSI Gaming X GTX 1066 gigabyte. Uh, so we're going to take that out of there when kind of this is all built and uh, throw it into this case. This case has more than enough room for that. And that should tie in an overall color scheme of red on the uh, GPU, a little bit of red on the motherboard as well. We've got red on the NVMe SSD. I've also got, you know, silver on the board. We've got silver on the RAM. So aesthetically with the RGB lights here and then the strips and then what we're going to get on the Wraith cooler as well. I think we're going to be able to throw together a pretty good looking build. I may end up building it on camera. Um, of course, I'm in my living room right now because I don't have a studio. It's still being repaired. That is a very slow and time consuming process. Uh, but if time affords it, um, I may just build it here or I may just build it off camera, maybe give you guys a little bit of a, a tour. If that's something you want to see, let me know either way, A or B. Maybe I'll put a poll up in the cards above to see what you guys would prefer. But what I want to know from you guys is what would you change in this build if this was your build? Would you opt for a GPU? Would you change the motherboard, change the processor, change the case? And specifically why? Um, on the flip side to that, if you think everything is absolutely fantastic here, let me know as well, because this is really only the second PC I've ever built myself. Um, I do a lot of parts guides for people. Um, I, I live, eat, sleep, and breathe PC stuff uh, when it comes to Paul's Hardware and Kyle Bitwit and Linus and Hardware Canucks and all that stuff. So um, I, I was very, very fortunate to uh, come into a, a prize that was awarded me from my, my workplace. I sold that. It was a cell phone. And I basically reinvested all of that money into this guy here. So uh, build guy coming soon, whether or not it's a guide or I just throw it together. I will keep you guys updated. Um, I'm going to try my best to maybe uh, put together some more content. This is my old camera. Uh, I'm shooting right now in 4K on the uh, G7 uh, from Panasonic. Unfortunately, I had lost my Canon M50 uh, in the flood as well. I think it got moisture damage and it just so happens to be two weeks out of warranty. So we're going to see what happens with that. Um, but Amazon affiliate links will be in the description for pricing and availability for all this stuff across Canada and the U.S., uh, if you guys use those links to buy these products or anything like it or anything you want for the holidays, just know a small commission does help uh, myself. It comes my way and uh, it's going to help sort of rebuild 
the studio downstairs and, and things I need to be successful and jump back on YouTube. And the biggest thing is it honestly doesn't cost you any more than should you shop without the affiliate link being clicked. Um, that's really it for today's video, guys. Off the cuff, my toddler's sleeping. I figured I'd throw this together. But until the next video, uh, my name is Quasi Dog. You guys have been awesome. And we'll catch you all in the next one. Take care.